Good evening and welcome to the Trinity Gardens Church of Christ Wednesday night Bible study. We're delighted to have you back. We are on a part eight of a 12 part series. And so we're uh, nearing the last quarter of our study. We ask that you will continue to remind your family and friends who uh, have been a part of this that we're on tonight. Uh, if you need to text them or give them a ring, please do that. We want to uh, encourage you to uh, stay involved with us until we get to the end of our journey. The subject that we're studying and have been studying now for eight weeks is doing right by those who have done you wrong. A study in forgiveness. Biblical forgiveness. Forgiveness is no doubt a challenge for all of us at different points in our life. And so we started this series and uh, introduced it under three, what I'm referring to as three large umbrellas. And uh, uh, tonight we'll go into the third umbrella. The first umbrella was the starting place of forgiveness. And if you miss those lessons, uh, we invite you to go to the Trinity Gardens Church of Christ Facebook page or to our YouTube channel, and you can uh, view those earlier lessons. They're still uh, on uh, online and they are, they are archived. And if you'd like to go back and catch up with where we are tonight, the first seven lessons are available for your purview. We uh, then move to the second umbrella after spending about three to four weeks on umbrella one uh, to what we call the stories of forgiveness. We looked at two biblical stories, uh, one in Matthew chapter 18, the other in Luke chapter 15. And we uh, learned a lot about the process of forgiveness in those two biblical stories. And tonight we're going to start the third umbrella, which I call the secret to forgiveness. So uh, we get down to uh, uh, what I call the heart of the matter, where we are really challenged with trying to move beyond the emotional drama and trauma of our life, especially sometimes things that we've carried from our childhood into our adult life. And that's plaguing us in our life and, and, and creating emotional uh, spiritual, psychological, uh, and sometimes even physical challenges. And so uh, this third umbrella really is what I call the key to unlocking, especially those uh, deep wounds. Uh, we have smaller infractions that people commit against us that we can pretty quickly get over. But when you get to those uh, big ones, it's, it's a lot tougher. So that's what we'll start into tonight. I want to remind you, you have the opportunity, should you choose to submit questions, I'm I think I'm going to spend that final uh, 12th, uh, 12th lesson really responding to questions in case I have missed covering an area that you were really waiting for me to get to. I have received some questions, and so I will uh, be addressing those. Some of those we uh, uh, were already in the plan. They're under part three of this series, uh, but some uh, are not. And so this will give me a chance to make sure that I address areas uh, that are concerned. So if you have generic or general questions uh, about this topic of doing right by those who have done you wrong, a study in forgiveness, we invite you to submit those questions. If you would rather submit them uh, uh, privately and not on this uh, public uh, site here, we, you, you're welcome to go to my uh, uh, Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, Ralph Draper, and submit it to me as an instant message. And uh, then I can uh, address that. But we're, we're, right now we're thinking we're going to spend our, our 12th uh, night, uh, 12th lesson, wrapping up those areas that we may have missed that are of concern to you. Right now, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, ask him to open our hearts and minds. Father God, we thank you for Christ, our Savior, who came to this earth, who taught us how to live and who demonstrated for us how to be sacrificial in our life and who redeemed us through his atoning works on the cross. We thank you for 
the forgiveness of our sins and for being reconciled through Christ back to you. We thank you for this Bible study tonight. We ask that you will open our hearts and our minds that we might receive with meekness your engrafted word, which is able to save all of our souls. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, so tonight we want to transition out of the stories of forgiveness. Again, that was Matthew chapter 18 and Luke chapter 15. And from time to time, we may reference back to some of those areas, but we started with the start of forgiveness and, and, and I need you to keep that at the forefront in all of these discussions, because anytime we talk about forgiveness, anytime we talk about figuring out how to release the pain that you may be carrying or, or to release the sense of alt or the sense of owing you that you may be carrying, it, 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 it's important that we keep in mind our own humanity, our own brokenness and, and the starting place, even when I want to forgive my brother, is to be aware of my own need for forgiveness. Jesus reminds us of that in Matthew chapter 18, the very last verse, he says, if you do not forgive your brother from the heart, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. And again, he's not teaching that God will not forgive you. He's teaching us that when we cannot extend forgiveness to others, it is very difficult, if not impossible, for us to experience the grace and the mercy and forgiveness we have received from God. So extending forgiveness to my fellow man is connected to experiencing forgiveness and grace from my heavenly father. So we remind, we, we, we encourage you to keep in the forefront of your mind through this journey of forgiveness, the realization that we all have a charge account that we will be accountable for. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all are in need of forgiveness. And so in order that we might experience that, we need to also extend that. Number two, in Matthew, we, we, were, we were reminded of those connections when we saw the master who, who went out to collect his accounts and, and he called one of his servants in who could not pay. And he was about to throw he and his family into debt or prison. But when the man begged for grace on extension of time. The Bible says the king or the master was moved with compassion and forgave him all his debt. And, and, and the thing that we really highlighted there is that forgiveness requires the ability to be compassionate versus being contempt, looking at someone with contempt. When we look at people with contempt, we judge ourselves superior to them, either morally or spiritually and not worthy or equal to us. And, and therefore we find it hard to release them. We, we carry that sense of awe. We carry that sense of you owe me something and you are less than I am. And so compassion is the ability to put oneself in another person's place and be aware that, but for the grace of God, there go I. And, and in Luke chapter 15, we see the story of, that we refer to as the prodigal son. Again, that key word was compassion because when his son left home, when he came back and he begged his father's forgiveness, the Bible says that the father was moved with compassion. Again, he put himself in his son's place. And it shouldn't be so difficult for us to put ourselves in our fellow servants or our fellow human beings place because as humans, we, we all are broken. We all are fallen. We all have the fallen nature that we inherited from our, our father, Adam. So it should not be a challenge. Jesus put himself in our place, even though he did not have the fallen nature. The Bible says that he became sin for us. He took our place. So if he could come down and put himself in our place who knew no sin, how is it that those of us who know sin cannot put ourselves in the place of our fellow uh, man? or our fellow friends. And so tonight we start the journey of how do we work through the deep wounds of our life? Uh, I, 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 an author that I read on this subject, Forgiveness, uh, illustrated uh, the wounds that we receive by referring to them in in three different sizes or three different degrees, if you will. He, he spoke of those pebble wounds, which are small pebbles 
that, that we are inflicted, uh, that people inflict on us just through the course of the day. Somebody cutting you off in traffic or throwing you the bird or or saying something nasty to you that they shouldn't have said. Just little irritants that we we sometimes experience in the course of our day, things that irritate us. And, 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 and so it's a pebble. And, and even those, when we allow them to fester and grow, you, you put enough pebbles together that becomes a very difficult burden to carry around. But most of us can get past our pebbles. We we may be momentarily irritated, but but we we generally can let it go. Most of us, and I say most of us, because some sometimes we we collected so many pebbles, we're so weighed down in our journey by small uh, uh, irritants or, or infractions that people have committed that j- just one more pebble is enough to set us off because we we are challenged uh, in, in ways that we we have not allowed ourselves to be cleansed of. And, and so we hear of things, unfortunately, such as road rage. And, and we wonder how is it that, that two people got into such heated rage over simply maybe being cut off in the lane. But sometimes people have allowed the baggage of emotional drama and trauma to collect in their hearts and in their arteries, if you will, their spiritual moral arteries that, 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 that one little pebble is enough to push them over. But, but, but for the most part, many of us can handle the small irritants. And then he, he compared the next size to what we might call rocks. Uh, rocks uh, are, are larger infractions that people commit against us and that we commit uh, that, that, that are more personal. Uh, when someone perhaps calls you out of your name or when someone lies on you or, or when someone uh, uh, gossips about you, a friend who gossips about you and you find out that it's a little bit bigger than a little impersonal irritant, but, but it's, it, it's, it's not uh, the, the third degree, which he used the stone, a large stone, uh, when, when we are deeply wounded. Many times those wounds are from our early life and continue over into our adult life. It may be, it may be a, a person who was abused in some kind of way, neglected in some kind of way, and, and you find yourself deeply wounded. And if you uh, 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 can't work through that. It tends to really bog down your life. But just, but just imagine if you're carrying the weight of too many pebbles, too many rocks, and two or three stones, major infractions, that's enough to weigh you down. That's enough to break you down. That's enough to cause your life to experience uh, a degree of drama and trauma and misery and unhappiness. Uh, collectively. So it's important to learn to work through those uh, small irritants and, and, and to work through those uh, uh, rocks and especially to learn how to work through those stones that have been dropped in our life that if we're not careful can certainly lead us to an early tombstone. Uh, these things affect us spiritually, they affect us physically, they affect us morally, psychologically, emotionally, and so it's important to, to work through it. And so this, this last one is it, about the, those stones or those accumulated pebbles and rocks that we've allowed to really uh, break into our life. So I encourage you to just re- remember that if you think about uh, this last one. Let's go to Genesis chapter 50. This is the text we're going to uh, use as the foundation of this study. So if you turn your Bibles to Genesis, the 50th chapter, again, we'll we'll use this as the foundation of this umbrella of the secret of forgiveness. Genesis chapter 50, we're going to start at the 15th verse. Genesis, the last chapter, and we'll start at verse number 15. The Bible says, "When, when Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, They said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. 
So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And the Bible concludes by saying, and he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Now, the story of Joseph's life is a, a story that psychiatrists and psychologists and counselors could spend countless hours helping this family work through. We sometimes refer to this as family systems. And this is what I have been referencing when I talk about the drama and trauma that can get locked inside a family that can go from generation to generation, negatively impacting the family for many generations to come. We see this in this story in Genesis chapter 50. Joseph is not only suffering because of the immediate sin or the immediate harm done to him, but he is suffering from a family dysfunction, if you will. He's suffering from a family system of secrets, a family uh, system of, of favoritism that is affecting his life. So let's, 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 let's back up in the book of Genesis to catch this family system. Cause I want you to understand that this thing can, can go from generation to generation causing many, uh, serious emotional and psychological and spiritual, uh, uh, wounds within families from generation to generation. Nobody can hurt us quite like our family, quite like our parents or our children or grandparent, or uncle, or sibling. Those are some of the places we receive some of our deepest wounds. Let's look at Joseph's family, bagging all the way back to his great-grandfather. Joseph's great-grandfather was none other than the patriarch Abraham. And though Joseph is uh, connected to this great patriarch as we see him, we need to realize this is a family that has some systems or some some, some suffering uh, secrets that they're passing on that's that's harming the family. So uh, uh, being a well-to-do family, be that uh, social status or, or economic status does not does not mean that your family is will not be impacted by some of this multi-generational dysfunction passed from generation to generation. When we look at uh, uh, Joseph's great grandfather Abraham, he had two boys, Ishmael. And Isaac, and you remember because of the trickery, they, they, they got rid of Ishmael and favored Isaac over Ishmael, uh, uh, over Ishmael. Ishmael and his mother, they were banned. They were, they were, they were chased away. And, and we see that emotional trauma, that family system follow through this family. The next, the next one is Isaac, who was the favorite son of Abraham. And, and, and he had two boys. Later on, he married Rebecca and he had two boys, uh, two twin boys, Esau and Jacob. And the Bible shows us how that, 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 that Jacob, uh, 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 rather Isaac favored Esau over Jacob and Jacob's mother, Rebecca favored, uh, uh, Jacob over Esau. So in this case, we have a double whammy. We have a father favoring one child and the mother Rebecca favoring the other child, again, causing this family divide, this family suffering, this family drama. And, and, and then we, we, we go to, after we look at his, his great grandfather Abraham, where we see him playing favorites with Ishmael and Isaac. And then we look at his grandfather Isaac, and we see him playing favorites with his 
his sons, Esau and Jacob. We then come to Jacob and Jacob has 12 boys. He has Joseph and his brothers. And this is the story we're in today. These brothers have fallen out because of the favoritism that, 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 that Jacob, uh, later to be known as Israel, the favoritism that he played with Joseph. Joseph was loved by his father more than any of his brothers. His, his father praised him and bragged on him and, 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 and protected him and, and, and showered him with favoritism. And it created resentment and ill will and harsh feelings from his brothers. So sometimes the, the drama of our life, the trauma of our life can start early from parental mistakes because we don't come from perfect families. Our parents, as much as we love them, are not perfect parents. And sometimes they, they do things that can cause uh, a pain to one or all of their children. They can cause a uh, strife like we see in this family or sometimes it's other, it's other forms of harm that can affect a child for the rest of their life. In this case, uh, 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 he, he finds himself Jacob favoring Joseph over all of his other 11 boys uh, to the point that one day when, when, when Joseph was just a young boy, maybe uh, 12 years old and, and sent by his father to check on his brothers who who were out working, when, when, when they saw their younger brother coming, their resentment had grown to the point. The many pebbles, if you will, those rocks and pebbles smaller than the stones had built up in, in the boys' hearts and minds. And when they saw their younger brother coming, somebody, one of the boys suggested, let's, here come, here come that dreamer. Here come daddy's favorite child. Here come the, the, the one who thinks he's better than the rest of us. Let's kill him. Literally, their desire was to kill him, to stop their emotional pain, to stop the pebbles, to stop the rocks. They had built up so much bitterness and resentment and ill will toward their younger brother, Joseph, that they moved in their hearts and had the nerve to literally suggest, let's kill him. And not only did one of them suggest it, but all of them jumped on board immediately as this is a great idea. Let's get rid of our pain. Let's get rid. He won't be the favorite if he is no more. You see, when, when resentment and bitterness is allowed to build in families or in friendships or in any relationship, when secrets run beneath the surface, when there is things, when there are things going on in families that people don't speak of and yet everybody is aware of, it can lead to such drastic measures as hating. And the Bible says that when you hate your brother, you are a murderer because hate leads to, many times, leads to murder. Uh, uh, Cain and Abel is another example where, where, where Cain resented his brother Abel to the point that he took his life. Here is a group of boys ready to kill their own brother, their own flesh and blood because of how his father treated him as compared to how he treated the rest of the boys. And just as they were about to seize on the boy to take his life, one of the brothers said, hey, let, let, let's not kill him. Let's, th th there's a, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, a caravan over there. Let, let's sell him to them as a slave. And, and that way we can get rid of him. He becomes a slave. He's not the special somebody he thought he was. We'll take that coat that dad gave him, that coat of many colors, that favorite coat that none of us got. We'll take it from him and we'll dip it in animal's blood and we'll tell, we'll tell dad that some wild animal killed him. So they went from murder to selling the boy into slavery, which is what they ended up doing. They sold him to a band that was coming along. They took him and sold their young 12 year old brother because of their hatred and resentment and their father's favorite treatment of him. And they took his coat of many colors. And I think the coat of many colors is really symbolic of how complex family life is how nuanced it can be, how there can be many things going on that can cause us to be psychologically and spiritually damaged. And so they took the coat and they dipped it in animal's blood and told the old man that Joseph evidently had been found, had evidently been killed and they only found his coat. And so their, his father grieved him thinking he, were, he was dead. And, 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 and years passed by 
before Joseph would ever see his family again. But just imagine this 12 year old boy whose life was turned upside down and he found himself in a pit being sold as a slave. Next week, we're going to pick up on this boy's life and we're going to come to where he is in Genesis chapter 50. I want to show you how childhood trauma can affect our adult life. Until then, may God bless you and may he keep you is my prayer.